and passed. Adjournment motion moved under Rule 16 bracket 2 of the Rules of Procedure. Members, President Xi Jinping delivered an important address to the whole community of Hong Kong of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region on the 1st of July and put forward four must and four expectations which in turn cover various pressing issues of Hong Kong that need to be properly addressed. This is the first regular council meeting since presidency delivered his July 1st address. At the same time, the new governing team has just assumed office and is working proactively to formulate various measures and policies. At this point in time, the SAO government needs to actively and urgently solicit views from different sectors. This council represents the public and has the duty to follow the instructions of presidency and address the pressing needs of the public. We should offer our view and advice to the new governing team at the first instance so Hong Kong could break out of the stalemate and strive forward. I consider the adjournment motion moved by the Honourable Starry Lee to be of urgent importance to the public. I therefore give her leave to move this motion under Rule 16 bracket 2 of the rules of procedure at this meeting. I have informed members via the Secretariat that I have decided to extend the period of the debate in accordance with Rule 16, Bracket 2 of the rules of procedure from the moving of the motion until all members who wish to speak and the designated public officer have spoken and the motion mover has replied. The motion mover, apart from having up to five minutes for an introductory speech, may speak for up to five minutes in reply. Other members may each speak once up to a maximum of five minutes. There is no speaking time limit for the public officer. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. And I'll call upon the Honourable Sari Lee to speak and move the motion. Press, uh, Honourable Sari Lee. President, I move the adjournment motion under Rule 16.2 of the Rules of Procedure to debate the implementation for the address made by President Xi Jinping on 1st of July for opening a new chapter of good governance. President Xi Jinping uh, attended the 25th uh, c celebration ceremony and uh, the, sixth, uh, uh, the, the inaugural ceremony of the 6th um, government, and he delivered an important address. He so, um, address um, his important guide, uh, um, um, influence on the guiding direction of, of Hong Kong. Uh, now, the new government has already assumed office, so they need to immediately implement the uh, points in Mr. the presidency's address and open a new chapter of good governance. The Legislative Council is an important constitutional element of uh, Hong Kong, as they are, so we need to. Uh, work together with government to implement the uh, address of the presidency. That's why, in accordance with uh, Rule 16, Bracket 2 of the Rules of Procedure, I'm moving this uh, German motion so this council could debate this very important issue. I'm grateful to the president for giving permission to this um, motion and for agreeing to extend the period for debating this motion so different members could uh, give their views from different perspectives. Now, we have limited time, so I will first uh, make two points on the July 1st address of President Xi Jinping, and then I will um, uh, give a reply after the uh, public officer has spoken. President Xi told us that um, there has been repeated testing and, uh, imp and imp implementation of the one country, two system. It's in line with the interests of the country and uh, Hong Kong. Say, oh, it has the full support of the 14 billion plus of um, uh, mainland pay compatriots. Uh, it's also fully supported by uh, the people of Hong Kong and Macau. So it is. Uh, uh, there is no reason for us to change such a good system. So we must adhere to it in the long run. As uh, Mr. Lo Hui Ling, um, the director of the liaison office, said, um, Mr. Uh, President Xi's address has set the tone. It's um, um, state. Um, you know, it's um, it's a calming force for Hong Kong. 
So it gives us confidence uh, for the um, long and steady implementation of one country, two systems. Those who worry that the one country, two systems principle may change, they could now rest assured. The second point, President C has reminded us that we must maintain the uh, distinctive status and advantage of Hong Kong. We are backed by the mainland, but then we need to stay connected with the world. This is a unique advantage for Hong Kong, and this is very much cherished by the people of Hong Kong as well as the central government. So we must not belittle ourselves. We need to know exactly what our strengths are. We must treasure these strengths, and then we must keep consolidating our status as an international financial uh, shipping centers and other centers. And then we must uh, keep the common law jurisdiction so that there will be a uh, um, good um, international connection. President, as she also pointed out, that we've moved from this array to good governance, and with good governance, we are entering a new phase of becoming more prosperous. The next five years are critical for Hong Kong to break new ground and achieve another leap forward. Everyone in the SL government and everyone uh, involved in governance must um, fully implement the spirit of the presidency's address. We need to show that our commitments and together with all sectors of the community, we need to um, build, start a new era for Hong Kong so we could leap, make another leap forward. I believe the one country, two systems is, um, uh, is uh, unique, is uh, superior, and it could uh, weather storms. Now, when Mr. President Xi Jinping arrived at Hong Kong, he made a short speech. He said that uh, we could expect more from the future. Now that we have risen from the ash, uh, we will um, uh, be revived. And with the full support of the country, the new government uh, could work together with all sectors, and definitely we will be able to start a new chapter for Hong Kong. Now, I'm moving this uh, motion so members would be able to dis debate uh, President Xi's important address at the first instance. It is also to provide platform for members to pass on the views of the public to the new government at the first instance so that um, we could all work for the well-being of the people of Hong Kong. Thank you. That this, um, I, now, I now propose a question you, to you, the Honorable Star Lisa Gemin motion be passed. The Chief Secretary for Administration, thank you, President. I'd like to thank Ms. Darley for moving the agenda motion so that the SAR government has the opportunity to listen to members' valuable views on how Hong Kong can implement the um, address uh, made by President Xi Jinping on the 1st of July at the sixth term inaugural ceremony. As pointed out by the chief executive in the question and answer session this morning, the healthy interaction between the executive and legislature Active collaboration and frequent exchanges are very important. This can enable us to incorporate members' views in drawing up our policies so that the policies can be more pragmatic, can better meet the public's expectations. Now, I look forward to listening to members' views on President Xi's important address so that we can work together, the executive and legislature can create better conditions to actively implement the four musts and the four expectations mentioned by President Xi so that we can further develop Hong Kong, create a better life for Hong Kong people. In his address, uh, President Xi uh, said that uh, uh, when country two systems have been tested and proved and must be adhered to over the long run since it is a good system, he has also expounded the basic rules and the valuable experience in practicing one country two systems. First, we must fully and faithfully implement one country two systems. Two, we must ensure the integration of the central authorities' uh, full jurisdiction and a high degree of autonomy of the SARL. Three, we must implement the principle of patriots administering Hong Kong. And fourth, we must uh, maintain Hong Kong's dis distinctive status and strength. I'd like to thank President Xi for his information of the implementation of one country, two systems in Hong Kong. It has boosted the governing team's morale. It has also given us a great boost uh, to Hong Kong's continued efforts. And he pointed out that we must maintain our unique advantages and status, and the central authorities will fully support Hong Kong integrating into the national development, conduct exchanges with the international community, and take forward reforms. And he has instilled great confidence among various sectors 
and the international community that one country, two systems will be implemented steadfastly and successfully. Uh, with the strong backing of the country, we can uh, make even greater achievements. We can cultivate a sense of happiness among Hong Kong people and make contributions to the nation's development. In his address, he also shared his four expectations on the six term government. And first, in, uh, we should improve our governance. Second, we should strengthen our development momentum. Three, we should address difficulties in people's lives. And fourth, we should jointly uphold and safeguard harmony and stability. The chief executive will lead the new term government. In achieving this, we will spare no effort in meeting the expectations of president. We will not disappoint President Xi, and we will not uh, disappoint the Hong Kong public. The chief executive will unite and lead various sectors to open a new chapter under one country, two systems, and Hong Kong will definitely enter a new phase of development. The important address of um, President Xi has a great meaning for Hong Kong's governance. The chief executive has held a working meeting with the governing team on President Xi's important address, when we will map out our directions and blueprint based on Xi's, President Xi's address. In fact, in his election manifesto, the chief executive's proposed policies are generally align in alignment with the four expectations. The SR government will strive to implement um, the four uh, expectations as raised by the uh, president. In terms of improving governance, the chief executive will lead a government which focuses on implementation. We should adopt a, a result-oriented approach. We should nip problems in the bud, and the various uh, bureau directors will lose, lose no time in dealing with problems. Secretaries of departments and deputy secretaries of department will actively coordinate work among government departments. They will discharge their own duties while complementing each other's strengths to achieve synergy. The chief executive has asked the bureau directors to set targets or KPIs in their policy portfolios so that we can monitor the progress of projects effectively and rectify problems when they surface. We should strengthen our accountability culture so that our governance can be more effective. So the bureau directors will be submitting their targets to the chief executive in August. To address issues of concern, the chief executive has um, directed that the following four tasks uh, should be set up headed by the secretaries of department. First, a task force headed by myself to address intergeneration poverty of students in the underprivileged groups. And this is to implement the um, pilot scheme mentioned in the CIS election manifesto to help um, the junior secondary school students in underprivileged groups are living in subdivided units. So we, we try to help lift them out of poverty. The second is the task force headed by the Financial Secretary on Land and Housing Supply. It is responsible for coordinating um, all relevant bureaus and departments involved in land supply and housing supply. We will improve our speed, efficiency, and quality, quantity. We would optimize the procedures. We would improve on in effective procedures and workflow, we would try to enhance our efficiency in supplying land and housing. Three, we would set up a task force headed by the Chief Secretary for Administration, uh, Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration and District Affairs Coordination. We would target to tackle certain issues, including hygiene black spots, street obstruction black spots, environment, and cityscape. We will coordinate work among different departments. Fourth, we would uh, set up a task force headed by the Deputy Financial Secretary on um, um, public housing uh, projects to uh, supervise PR extra construction. Within 100 days of the assumption of office of the current uh, term government, they will make initial proposals on expediting uh, public housing construction so that we can um, more effectively uh, supply housing. And this morning, at the Q, uh, a Q&A session of the CE, we have met with the media and uh, talked about our thinking. Uh, Chairman 
uh, are present, uh, councillors, in less than a week uh, of being in office, we have already started our work in uh, covering education, elderly care, welfare, youth development, attracting talents, and so on. We will um, aim to enhance Hong Kong competitiveness on uh, various areas. We would consolidate the state of Hong Kong as the eight different major centers under the 14th five-year plan. We would continue to enhance Hong Kong's status as an international financial center, international shipping center, international business center, and Asian international legal and dispute resolution center. We would also vigorously develop three, uh, four new hubs, i.e. Uh, international aviation hub, international innovation technology hub, regional intellectual property trading hub, and also a China Western cultural and art exchange hub. Uh, on the one hand, we would leverage on the backing, the solid backing provided by the government, and give full play to Hong Kong's unique advantages. We would try to um, expand our development opportunities. At the same time, we would also actively integrate into the national development. We we'll try to be a participant in the domestic circulation and a facilitator in the international circulation. We would contribute to the development of the nation. We would also strengthen our collaboration with um, cities and towns in the GBA will take advantage of our strengths uh, of being near the mainland, our strengths in talent and industrial chain. We will um, achieve complementary uh, complementarity in our advantages. As the CS4A, based on the uh, speech made by the presidency on 1st of Ju July, I will do my utmost to uh, help the chief executive to implement the principle of one country, two systems. I will also convert forces and coordinate among different uh, bureaus to formulate and, and implement policies which are beneficial to Hong Kong and people of Hong Kong and to realize and meet with the expectations of President Xi so that we can maintain Hong Kong's long-term stability and prosperity. And we will continue to play an important role in the development of the nation in the long run. Uh, I so submit, after members have spoken, I will make a concluding remark. Ms. Eunice Young. First, I would like to thank Ms. Sari Lee for moving this adjournment motion so we could uh, this debate the implementation of the address made by the by President Xi for opening a new chapter of good governance. I'd like to focus on three points. First, um, the uh, uh, President's speech says that uh, um, there is an important milestone for the implementation of one country, two systems. It doesn't matter if there have been a foreign interference as long as we stand firm by the, uh, one country, two systems, and then uh, we make sure that um, there, that, uh, there is no deviation from that, then definitely we could uh, uh, sus uh, achieve even greater success. That's the first point. Second point, one country, two systems is the best uh, protection for our, our society. It is an important cornerstone for long-term stability and prosperity. So it is give us a self-confidence in the system. Now, um, the uh, presidency has given us an undertaking. It's also given us a, a task to, to take up that uh, the Hong Kong uh, needs to actively integrate into national development and uh, tie in with uh, with um, with um, the national strategy, so we could uh, leverage on our advantage of one country two systems, and then there could be um, wider and deeper uh, opening up for the country, and we'll play an important role in that. The third point is something we must always bear in mind: that is, uh, presidency has four expectations of our development. Under the principle of Pedro's administering Hong Kong as uh, members of this council, we have the duty to support and monitor the governance of the government in accordance with law. So the government, and we want to see the, to make sure the government improve its governance. Uh, now the people always uh, um, aspire for a better life. That is the um, um, goal of our work. We have to have the, the resolution to fight the epidemic, deal with innovation, technology development, also tackle the housing issue. We also need to address the deep-seated conflicts in Hong Kong. At the same time, we must promote Hong Kong's integration into national development, and then we must um, continue to give play to our spirit of inclusiveness and foster harmony. We must also care about young people so we could help them deal with their education, career, and housing um, needs. We want to give them more opportunities. This morning, Mr. John Lee 
um, gave an opening address at the start of the chief executive's question and answer session, and I uh, very much appreciate that address because uh, he's um, giving us assurance that the new government will lead us to start a new chapter for Hong Kong. Now, there are different uh, um, secretaries of, of departments who will chair different um, task forces. Uh, the, the Chief Secretary for Administration is going to chair this task force on um, poverty. We know there is a serious poverty problem, especially involving children. So well, I hope this uh, task force will be set up soon, and we'll see whether uh, this task force could have organic interactions with uh, uh, the relevant um, subcommittees of this council so that uh, we could be involved in the actual work of your task force. Now, there is also a task force on uh, land and housing supply and another task force on district administration. So, um, it shows uh, uh, this is a very important step forward for us to achieve good governance. Because the new government has only been in office for six days and then we see that they have done so much already, and it's very encouraging. So we want to maintain stability and prosperity in Hong Kong. The government must uh, follow by the four must um, mentioned by President Xi, and then it could achieve the four expectations. Because in the four must, uh, President Xi first talked about the one country, two system, and then he explained the socialist system of the country and uh, uh, the relation between Hong Kong and uh, the country. And then we also have to realize we have advantages, say, in, in financial sector, innovation, technology, and so on. We need to have a stable environment for such development. So Hong Kong needs to do step up on the four must, and then we must also achieve the four expectations. Only then would we see the long and steady implementation of one country, two systems, and then we'll have stability here. Thank you. Dr. Lo Wei Kwok. President, I'm grateful to the Chairman of the House Committee, Mr. Ari Lee, for moving this adjournment motion. So we could uh, debate the implementation of the address made by President Xi Jinping on the 1st of July for opening a new chapter of good governance. Uh, so, And then we could pass on the views of the public and also promote um, a healthy interaction between the executive and the legislature. President Xi's address has... Uh, um, uh, stated clearly that um, we will hold fast to the one country, two systems principle. As long as we uh, remain on the right track under one country, two systems, there is no need to change the system because this is a good system, so we could uh, uh, keep it uh, in the long run. Now, the President see that uh, we must also adhere to uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing, while securing the SAR's high degree of autonomy. It shows clearly that under one country, two systems, uh, first, the basis is one country before we have two systems. So we must also ensure Hong Kong is administered by patriots. This is, and then we must maintain Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages. President Xi pointed out the next five years will be a critical phase for Hong Kong to move towards uh, further prosperity. He raised four expectations of the new term of the government, uh, uh, including uh, uh, rate improving its governance, uh, continue to create strong impetus for growth, uh, uh, earnestly addressing people's concerns, difficulties, and, and fostering safety, uh, harmony, and stability. Now, the B BPA core members and youth representatives met on Monday. We held a uh, talk uh, to learn about President Xi's address. Those attending the session said that uh, President Xi knew very well our aspirations. For people in Hong Kong, the, their strongest wish is for life to be better. They could um, have um, um, more spacious living space. They're better, there will be ed better opportunities for young people, better education for, young, for children, and um, better care for the elderly. So the um, President Xi has pointed out exactly the issues of the greatest concern to people of Hong Kong. And he also stressed that uh, what the people wishes is what the government will strive hard to work towards. And so the government needs to work hard to improve livelihood. Now, Mr. John Lee said in his election speech that he must strengthen the government's capacity of the government to solve problems for the public. And then we're through developing the northern metropolis, that would be the opportunity for us to um, 
comprehensively improve Hong Kong's competitiveness. As a member of the engineering sector, of course, I support that. The engineering sector uh, looks forward to John, Mr. John Lee's leadership, which uh, is uh, result oriented, and then he will resolve all the um, uh, remove all the obstacles, and and he will be daring to um, start new initiatives, especially in terms of land development and uh, housing production. He, we must um, remove all the outdated regulation, and then uh, they will we will proceed with the various uh, major infrastructure projects such as Northern Metropolis development, uh, land to tomorrow vision vision and uh, an initiative. We also need to improve the uh, road network and tra transport network, and then the SL government should lead the team to apply new technology and boost productivity. For example, expanding the use of modular integrated construction and the use of building. Um, information modeling, and that the government should also actively consider using blockchain and other uh, cloud uh, da uh, data functions so that uh, we could um, um, simplify cumbersome processes and there will also be real-time monitoring. The government should also um, pro roll out projects in a northerly manner. There should be better projection of manpower needs and so on, and then they could train talents more actively. The engineering sector, which is uh, all prepared to support the government in its development blueprint, and that together we could build for uh, a better future for Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. Dominic Lee. Thank you, President. First of all, I'd like to thank Ms. Dari Lee for raising this uh, German debate so that we have the opportunity to discuss on the important address made by President Xi Jinping recently, and we would have the opportunity to implement this address by opening a new chapter of good governance. Even with this severe pandemic, President Xi still decided to come in person to attend the inaugural ceremony and the 25th year celebration. And we're happy to see President Xi and to listen to his speech. We feel very fortunate. President Xi's understanding of our situation is very comprehensive. He knows of our housing issues and knows of the deep-rooted problems in Hong Kong. President Xi talked about four must and four um, hopes and expectations in his speech, and it is very appropriate. We want the one country, two systems principle to remain the same, and that is the most appropriate system for us. Uh, many uh, foreigners like to smear our system. Some Hong Kong misunderstand and misbelieve in these views, and therefore they are in doubt of Hong Kong's future. However, President Xi, in his speech this time, reiterated many times the uniqueness of the one country, two systems uh, principle. And this demonstrates that as long as we persist and we uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction, the central government will secure the SAR's high degree of autonomy. And this is very encouraging because it can totally um, show the world that they are just uh, smearing our system. I believe that in LegCo, we feel deeply because uh, President Xi said that the that the city should be administered by patriots. He said that um, there is uh, no other country in which they would allow non-patriots to administer the place, and that if we're able to safeguard the interests of the city, then we'll be able to safeguard the interests of everyone. And we're talking about 7 million people in Hong Kong. We are all working very hard for Hong Kong, and this is actually a reflection of patriots and ministering Hong Kong. I'm sure that with all your help and support, we'll be able to open a new chapter of governance in Hong Kong. For the four expectations raised by President Xi, we are all in full support. 
Uh, we're going to work on GBA Belt and Road Initiative. Therefore, Hong Kong as a city, we must follow with the footsteps of the country's development. If we are not able to grasp such obvious opportunities, then we are really missing out and really must work together even though there has been social unrest in 2019 which has been organized by uh, foreign um, people we still need to resolve the issues of the widening gap between rich and poor and the deep-rooted housing issues President Xi was correct these problems must be dealt with as long as the government listens to President Xi and implements these four must and four expectations, then I'm sure that we'll be able to resolve all the problems in Hong Kong, and Hong Kong will see a more prosperous future. Thank you. Mr. Jimmy Ng. Thank you, President. Your German debate has been abused uh, very often in past Yes, but this time it is different because this German motion is on the debate of the implementation of the address made by President Xi for opening a new chapter of good governance. And I'm sure we would all speak up on that. Good governance is actually a term for a uh, for a good government, and it is actually a premise that could bring along a good governance. We must implement the principle of patriots um, ministering Hong Kong to ensure the long-term prosperity of Hong Kong. President Xi on July 1st talked about four musts and four expectations. And I believe that he has already pointed us in the right direction and will and for us to implement this good governance. He actually quoted from um so sick that um and that ancestors uh Working hard is an important chapter in which they work to endeavor for a better future. President Xi's hope is that uh, Hong Kong should actually live in better housing and that we should address people's concerns and difficulties. There should be better education for children and better care for the elderly. So he is actually uh, looking for what people most want wants and expects. The past government did not do much in improving subdivided units issue. I would like to remind the government for this term that SDU is not only a problem for people here, it has also affected the attraction of foreign talents into Hong Kong. You might Query why this is the case. Actually, it has proven to be so. As of 2017, through the um, um, mainland expert program, in which um, after seven years they can apply for residence, there are 4,927. But from 2003 to 2011, 4,900. 49,021 of them have applied uh, to come to Hong Kong through this method, which means that only 10% stayed in Hong Kong. We have been losing talents other than expensive living. Um, people find it difficult to live in Hong Kong because some people only live about uh, 40 square meters in subdivided units. Even if you're not able to resolve this issue, giving them 5,000 consumption voucher will not help much. The government has suggested an indicator 
to try to raise people's uh, living space from 161 square feet to 200 square feet so that we will not have see any more SDUs. This is a pragmatic uh, indicator that we need to work towards. Mr. John Lee in the Q&A session just now said that we should be outcome oriented and that we must ensure to address people's concerns and difficulties, which is very encouraging. I'm sure that as we all work together. We are not going. Uh, we will be able to work towards a presidency's hopes and expectations. So, Mr. Lee Chen Kang, thank you, President. President Xi came in person to attend the inaugural ceremony and the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's return to China. And I, on behalf of the Liberal Party, would like to express my sincere gratitude. I felt very encouraged by President Xi's speech because I feel that he has been with us and by us all this time, all along these um, ups and downs and difficulties in Hong Kong. He is concerned with the well-being of everyone in Hong Kong. It's easy to understand presidencies, and they are full of hopes and expectations for us, other than Uh, using the history of Chinese civilization to talk about our past. He also promises that the one country, two systems principle will continue and that this will be faithfully implemented. This is a good system and there is no need for change. President Xi's speech has all has touched us deeply and it has alleviated many of our concerns this is actually like a stabling um comment for all of us he raised four must in his speech and it is connected to each other so he has given us a strong direction i'd like to point out that in the first must he talked about that the more firmly the one country principle is upheld, the greater strength the two systems will be unleashed for the development of the SARs. I believe that we must fully implement one country, two systems principle. And most important of all, we must need to understand the one country awareness and that we must safeguard the national sovereignty of our country. By doing that, we can then enjoy the uniqueness of Hong Kong to work with the 14th five-year plan and to work together with the country in the GBA, LCEP, and therefore longer prosperity in the future. As a newbie to LegCo, I understand that um, that uh, um, that tango takes two. And so in implementing any principles, the new government must consult LegCo members and listen to our views so that we could all provide concrete recommendations and that we'll be able to actually um, be rejuvenated and that um, people should and share and share burdens and concerns so every department should uh, be patriotic and to have a servant's heart to provide pub uh, public service and to come up with policies that can benefit all. Only by doing that can we develop in housing and work for the elderly and then to resolve all these deep-rooted problems. President Xi also mentioned a fifth expectation to pay particular attention to young people that 
there should that there should be education, entrepreneurship, uh, studies, and purchase of housing. Young people, as long as they would have a sense of national pride, they would be able to enhance their awareness of status as masters of the country and to enjoy a bright future. Therefore, uh, we must try our best to work towards this goal. I am sure that all LegCo members will try our best to uh, work for that, and the Liberal Party will work together with the government to try to create a synergy in the community to provide more opportunities for young people. Mr. Ronick Chen, President. Uh, President Xi made an important speech on the 1st of July. He said that um, the reunification represents a new chapter for Hong Kong with the full support of the um, motherland over the 25 years and the concerted efforts um, of Hong Kong. The one country system has achieved uh, unprecedented success. This is a good system and must be adhered to in the long run. Now, this is a major thing and has boosted our confidence in the steadfast and successful implementation of one country, two systems. The rumors have been dispelled. Now, we are coming from uh, turning from chaos to prosperity and from prosperity to um, what well, chaos to to governance, governance to prosperity. We must strengthen our development momentum. In the financial sector, it means that um, whether it is related to when that we can have sustainable development for the financial sector, we, whether we can maintain our unique status since the return to the motherland with the support of the country, the financial regulators and practitioners have uh, done their very best to achieve uh, great uh, results. In terms of uh, securities, funds and bonds, uh, they have been thriving and the scale of banking industry has expanded continuously. Hong Kong's status as an international financial center has been consolidated and upgraded. But then we also see that because of uh, geopolitical uh, tensions and the uh, deglobalization trend and also the challenges brought by fintech development and the intense competition from the neighboring cities, uh, our status as a, as a financial center is being threatened. We must advance in order not to retreat. So we must work together and we must put in the hard work to enhance Hong Kong's competitiveness. We must also um, strengthen our development momentum. We must seize hold of the opportunities brought by the country's development. The 14th National Five-Year Plan has um, given us a clear positioning on Hong Kong's financial industry with the continued development of the country, the development of the GBA and the Belt and Road Initiative. Um, Hong Kong will enjoy enormous opportunities. If we can integrate into the national strategy, Hong Kong's financial sector will have very bright prospects. Second, we must um, um, give full play to our advantages as a connector, and we must um, keep the freedom and the openness of the financial sector. We must step up our exchanges with the international world. We must uh, enhance our influence and attractiveness to the neighboring cities. By doing that, we can further develop. and. We can enhance our services. We can then strengthen our basic infrastructure. And then thirdly, we must also ride on the international financial industry development trend. We must be bold in our approach. We must embrace new technologies. We must have uh, assumed new thinking. We must um, switch or transform. Uh, into a digital world. We should unleash our potential. We should uh, develop high quality services. Fourth, we should adopt a multi prone approach to attract uh, financial services uh, talent. And we must nurture and attract professional and international talents. I support 
the government devoting more resources into training financial sector's uh, talents, but we must also broaden the channels for attracting talents. We must provide favorable conditions to attract talent from the mainland and the world round to work in Hong Kong so that we can build a bigger talent pool. President Xi said that uh, the Chinese nation's rejuvenation has entered a new stage. and. Um, the development of one country, two systems in Hong Kong is an important component in all this. As legislators, we should take the lead in implementing the uh, remarks made by President Xi in his uh, speech. We must meet the four expectations espoused by President Xi. We must um, um, turn from governance to greater prosperity. Mr. Chen Hong, on the 1st of July, President Xi Jinping attended the inauguration of the new term government and made an important speech. In his speech, President Xi offered um, four musts and four expectations. Apart from maintaining the fundamental interests of the nation, um, we must persevere. And he also talked about the need to enhance the quality of governance and to tackle issues. And at the end, um, President Xi talked about the need to care for our youth and creating more opportunities for them. The important speech made by President Xi on July the 1st was a test for the new term government. In the next five years, the SAL government must provide the answers, tackle the deep-seated issues, and push Hong Kong forward and create a new chapter of good governance or else um, Hong Kong will miss um, the chance to go from governance to prosperity. I have two points to make on the important speech of President Xi. The SAL government should uphold the principles of, Mr. of President Xi's speech. First, President Xi talked about the need to enhance governance, reinforce capabilities and efficiency. The, um, the SAL must be um, developed in a positive manner. The fifth wave of the pandemic um, showed the need to enhance the, the uh, governance capabilities of the SAL government and to realize that um, district governance must be improved and grassroots governance must be reinforced as well. Many people feel there's a lack of coordination among the government and for different issues such as community issues, housing, water leakage, etc., people have to um, approach different government departments and the responsibility is often being shifted around, and this is certainly not ideal. In order to reform district governance, there must be a principal department responsible to play the role of coordinator so that when people run into difficulties, um, they can get in touch with the relevant authorities as soon as possible, and that there is better coordination in place to tackle the complaints and that was an aspiration of President Xi. President Xi also talked about the need to resolve livelihood issues. He stressed the aspirations of the people towards a good life, and this is a goal we should work towards. For the people in Hong Kong, um, people wish to have better living environments. They want to see more opportunities and better education. And President Xi um, offered a heartfelt speech in identifying these issues. So would the new town government show commitment in tackling these problems? In terms of housing, the chief executive, John Lee, talked about the government's um, priority, um, that is to reduce the waiting time for public housing in um, his um, e election campaign. Mr. Lee stressed the importance of a results-oriented approach. So. What is our goal five years down the road? Are we going to reduce the waiting time to under three years? And how are we going to gradually achieve this goal? I hope the SAL government can truly address the speech made by President Xi on July the 1st for the benefit of the people. Thank you. Reverend Peter Kuhn. President, it has been 25 years since Hong Kong's return to the motherland, President Xi attended the inauguration and made an important speech on July the 1st. He summarized the um, experience and inspirations from One Country, Two Systems. He offered 
um, expectations for Hong Kong and provided um, key directions for Hong Kong. Hong Kong should fully appreciate and um, understand the benefits of one country, two systems to reinforce Hong Kong's status and strengths. There were people in Hong Kong that um, that Hong Kong will lose its capitalist characteristics and it will gradually become um, another mainland city. President Xi's speech alleviated some of these concerns among the people in Hong Kong and he offered reassurances for Hong Kong as well for um, uh, people that um, sought to um, smear um, Hong Kong the um, claims have been rebuked and we are at a critical juncture going from chaos to order to prosperity Hong Kong must rise from the ashes and there are two key areas we must look at first to fully um, implement the four musts offered by President Xi and we must pay attention to his four expectations as well. These four expectations are related to the um, inadequacies of Hong Kong currently. We face staunch challenges in recent years and Hong Kong has seen instability and crises but um, there's hope at the end of the day. So long as we um, stick to one country, two systems, and fully embrace the fundamental interests of the nation and to um, consider the interests of the Hong Kong and Macau SARs and to fully um, embrace the opportunities under the National 45 Year Plan as well as the Greater Bay Area by making use of our strengths and status, um, we can create new economic drivers. The 1.4 billion people of the nation would provide solid backing for us. Presidency made it clear that one country systems is a sound system and there is no reason to change it. It must be embraced on the long run. The chief executive talked about a results-oriented approach. He should tackle um, the various livelihood issues and come up with holistic solutions and ensure that they are implemented. He should um, lead the um, cabinet in establishing um, positive policies and enhance the um, quality of the civil service that will create new impetus for Hong Kong and maximize our strengths. That way, um, under a new chapter, we can achieve good governance. Governance should be based on the people. That way, people would feel happier and fulfilled. That would promote social harmony and create a caring Hong Kong. Harmony, care, um, hard work, determination are traditional strengths for Hong Kong and they are a big part of our success. Going forward, Hong Kong must continue to exercise such strengths and looking into the future, uh, we have every reason to be confident. We must um, exploit the opportunities offered by our motherland and in the context of national development, we can find our opportunities and exercise our strengths at the end. The pearl of the Orient, that is Hong Kong, will um, rise from the ashes again. Mr. King Si Wong. President, President Xi made an important speech on July the 1st, um, which offered four musts and four expectations. And he provided guidance to the future development of Hong Kong. It was a strategic summary of the success achieved in the past 25 years, as well as the various opportunities and risks we are facing or challenges. The SAL government and policy makers um, should aspire to um, shoulder greater responsibility and act to uphold one country, two systems. And I, 
I'd like to share some of my um, own experience in terms of the livelihood issues. Presidency talked about the people's aspirations for a um, happier life, and that should be our goal. And that was um, the aspirations of the Communist Party of China as well. And we must um, answer the question, that is, um, what is development um, good for? And President Xi asked the new term government of the Hong Kong SAR to answer the calls of the people. And that should be the priority in policy making. That way, um, more people can benefit and everyone would then understand that um, hard work would mean um, better lives for themselves and their family. And there are public um, aspirations for a better life. They uh, wish to have more spacious living and more work opportunities, better education for the elderly. They want to receive better care. Presidency also um, talked about the need to um, support our youth because um, with happy youth, Hong Kong can benefit. And to that front, we need to um, provide entrepreneurial and employment support for our youth and create more opportunities for them. Presidency tended his care for the people of Hong Kong and our youth, and he made um, a great speech and um, conveyed the wishes of the people. That showed his care for the people. It was a motivational speech, and it reassured the. Um, it, he offered reassurances for the people. So we hope the new time government can um, pay attention to the full expectations of presidency. The SAL government should embrace change in our labor policy and create quality and diversified opportunities for our young people. The grassroots workers should be properly rewarded for their work and everyone should be able to live a dignified life. And um, everyone in Hong Kong should benefit. So the SAL government should take the lead in uh, abolishing the um, outsource system and um, roll out MPF schemes with guaranteed returns. They should um, eliminate the working poor. The SAL government uh, the policy makers, they must institute reforms and they must embrace um, change in policy making and they should um, no longer be um, obsessed with the, f the free market principle. They should um, give priority to the, the interests of Hong Kong people. The FTU is a, an association that loves Hong Kong and the nation. We will certainly contribute and we will provide oversight to the SAL government in implementing the spirit of presidency's speech and to create um, more fulfilling lives for everyone and promote social harmony. Thank you. Mr. Martin Liao. President, President Xi has made a key address on the 1st of July. It um, uh, concisely includes uh, the four uh, must under the one country, two systems principle. He also mentioned his four expectations for Hong Kong, pointing a clear path um, for Hong Kong from uh, this array to governance. Coinciding with the um, inauguration of the sixth term of the government, I thank uh, Mr. Dari Lee for moving this motion. We really have to implement uh, patriots administering Hong Kong um, to achieve good governance. Mr. Tang Xiaoping, back in uh, 1984, has uh, mentioned the idea of uh, patriots administering Hong Kong. During the uh, 25 years after the return of Hong Kong to China, we have learned a hard lesson, that is, we cannot 
implements or fully implements uh, the one country, two systems uh, principle, Hong Kong will um, be damaged. There will be a uh, chaos, um, instability, and deep rooted um, conflicts. In the end, uh, it will be Hong Kong people who pay. As uh, President Xi said, we have to ensure that uh, the power to administer Hong Kong um, rests with patriots. This is uh, a prerequisite um, for the long lasting stability of Hong Kong. Safeguarding the um, power to govern Hong Kong is equal to safeguarding the interests of um, the Hong Kong people. Now, um, the state leaders have improved proactively our electoral system. After local legislation, three important elections have been held. The principle of patriots administering Hong Kong has been implemented. In the coming five years, the government should continue to um, build on the um, principle including requiring um, public offices as well as uh, teachers in uh, suspended um, schools and other organizations to um, swear allegiance. Now, the key is people. The SAR government is the, um, has the main responsibility to enhance the governance uh, quality, including um, enhancing a training to ensure that civil servants have a national and international perspective and uh, can truly um, help the people. And, and also we have to enhance the training um, of uh, patriots um, in all uh, aspects. Now, the, um, uh, Mr. John Lee has mentioned that um, he will recruit some more young people into advisory bodies to provide a platform for them to be engaged in politics. This is a good start. To address the, uh, the uh, lack of political talents in Hong Kong, we have to enhance um, national education and civic education to build a foundation of uh, patriotism. We have to learn from the mainland and Singapore to establish a system to attract um, governing uh, talents, including civil servants and non-civil servants so that more people with talents and aspirations will be recruited into the uh, talent pool of the government so that they can receive um, systematic training and um, gain experience in terms of a political debate and policy um, formulation. And there should be clear KPIs uh, to, uh, for them to be promoted. My final point is, in terms of uh, implementing the, patri the principle of patriots um, governing Hong Kong, it is not about uh, having uh, just one voice. We need um, um, unison and also a diversity in governing Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a place where East uh, meets West. Um, the, co the composition of our society is uh, diverse. After the, after the epidemic, we have to ensure that uh, we can keep up our competitiveness and also address uh, livelihood concerns. The government has to ensure that the mainstream value of a patriots governing Hong Kong as well as alignment of the country is um, put in place. We have to unify um, uh, um, talents from orphans to uh, start a new chapter for Hong Kong. I so submit I support the motion. Mr. Chen Siu Hong, President, I speak in gratitude and support of um, Ms. Tari Lee's motion. This is the 25th year after the return of Hong Kong to, ch to the country, and also it is the new chapter of a governance after the improvements of the electoral system. It is a historical moment. President Xi, um, braving the epidemic and the typhoon, attended the inauguration uh, ceremony of the sixth term of the government, as well as the um, 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 ceremony for um, the 1st of July. It shows that uh, President Xi's um, care and love for Hong Kong. It really um, in, um, invigorated us. President Xi has set a direction for Hong Kong as well as um, gave us uh, assurance for us to uh, scale new heights. In his address, he praised uh, the successful implementation of the one country, two systems principle. He also mentioned four must. 
which are the prerequisites for the long-term um, stability and long-term success of the one country, two systems principle. President Xi, in his um, address, has um, um, fortified our faith in the principle. It is the best system, system to ensure the long-term stability and prosperity of Hong Kong. However, a small group of people do not have a comprehensive understanding of the one country, two systems principle, plus the um, smearing of the opposition, as well as um, people with ulterior motive. They think that um, the two systems should um, override a one country. According to President Xi, we, ha we have to ensure the overall jurisdiction of the uh, central government as well as the um, high degree of autonomy of um, Hong Kong. It clearly um, cleared the air and also um, dispelled all the, uh, all the uh, smearing. This is a good system and there is no need to change. We have to adhere to the principle. For those who are still uh, confused, it is really a, a strong reassurance. It shows the Hong Kong people and the world that if we adhere to the four must and the four expectations, then we can keep the um, one country, two systems, a principle um, sailing. Despite uh, what we have encountered in the past 25 years with the staunch support of the Central People's Government, we have um, seen a great uh, development in terms of e economy and uh, the lives of people. The system is uh, vibrant and it is uh, working and it is also an assurance for our pres uh, prosperity and stability. I believe that if we adhere to what President Xi said, we can definitely um, scale new heights. There are four expectations, including improvements of governance and uh, strengthening the impetus for growth, addressing uh, people's concerns and difficulties in daily life, and, uh, cons and safeguard harmony and stability. These expectations show that uh, President Xi is well aware of the situation in Hong Kong, and he uh, keeps close to heart uh, people's uh, concern of housing, education, and uh, opportunities um, in life. It is well said that uh, people's aspiration for a better life is what we are striving for. I urge the new term of the government to be practical and answer the people's hope, especially the grassroots. The four expectations of President Xi are an encouragement as well as um, a drive. Now, Hong Kong people have high expectation for the next of, of the new term Government. We have to learn comprehensively and the spirits behind um, President Xi's address. We have to fully implement his address and also we have to be pragmatic and um, be result oriented so that we can achieve um, the uh, full expectations and, um, and uh, answer to uh, President Xi. Now, um, as the Legislative Council member in the improved uh, system, I'm really um, encouraged and I really feel the heavy responsibility on our shoulders. It really uh, um, fortified uh, my resolution to serve the um, society. I will use my strengths to, for the benefits of Hong Kong, Hong Kong's people, as well as the country, and the um, great uh, rejuvenation of the uh, Chinese people. Thank you. Mr. Jeffrey Lam. President, first I thank uh, Ms. Starry Lee for moving this meaningful motion. Using this opportunity, I would like to thank uh, President Xi again for giving this important speech in person uh, on the historical date uh, of um, the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's reunification with the country. The four must and four expectations have um, fortified our faith in one country, two systems, and it really shed um, light for our future developments. It will unify different um, players in our society to uh, open a new chapter for Hong Kong. As a representative of the industry and commerce sector, I will focus on the, four, on the fourth must. That is, uh, we must uh, continue maintain, to, to maintain our distinctive status and advantages. Hong Kong is a um, gateway and a platform for, um, for the international world. And we have um, an international maritime center status. 
Now, um, we have to improve our international financial standing, shipping and trading center, and keep our business environment free, open and regulated, and to maintain the common law. As presidency said, we have to maintain and adhere to uh, the one country, two systems principle. The message is clear. It is a reassurance for the local and international community um, to dispel uh, unnecessary worries. Local and foreign investors will not have any qualms that Hong Kong is a, is a place uh, with unlimited opportunities. To ensure that um, the one country, two systems uh, principle is not changed or um, vaccinated, we have to foster a, a platform for a fair competition and we have to um, create a transparent uh, business environment. The new term government has to cannot afford to be complacent. It has to foster a, even an even more transparent business environment to enhance the confidence of local and foreign uh, investors. They are three folks. First, uh, we have to set up a uh, we have to create a more competitive um, taxation system to attract talents and investments into Hong Kong. Economic recovery after the epidemic is something that um, every um, economy uh, is um, has to think about. We have to strive to get more uh, top 500 um, corporations to establish in Hong Kong and introduce more unicorns um, into Hong Kong. And also we have to uh, review our talent policies to retain and attract talents. Well, um, talents don't uh, fall from the sky. So and talent, when talents leave, um, they um, very often they do not return. So we need to um, offer a favorable taxation uh, policies for them. Under the 14th uh, five-year plan, the country supports Hong Kong to be an international logistics hub, financial center, as well as um, a place uh, where East meets West. I'm concerned whether the government has um, tailor-made a talent list to cope with our needs for development in the next 20 years. We have to fight for talents. But will the, the government uh, cannot um, just um, sit on their hands and wait for talents to come. Otherwise, we will, we, will, we will be losing to our competitors uh, in the uh, international world. Third, um, the most uh, urgent thing is to uh, resume um, normal um, interaction and uh, cross-boundary travel with the mainland and uh, overseas countries. I hope the government can implement a co-location arrangement uh, in our airports. When people uh, come, they will bring about uh, investment and uh, capital. Now, Hong Kong as an outward-facing economy is um, in the storm of the eye. Once uh, before we can um, open uh, the um, cross-boundary travel with uh, the mainland overseas, uh, we will. Uh, it will. Um, uh, it will be very difficult for us. Time's up. Ms. Nixon, General Secretary, President and President Xi Jinping delivered opening uh, important remarks on the 1st of July, and he categorically put forward four musts and four expectations. Now, he reminded the Hong Kong government and the sectors of community with this speech on what we should pay attention to. As a young lawmaker here, and I have been spending much time working on district affairs and youth affairs, I appreciate the presidency's concern on our young people. I think the SAL government should step up its effort in listening to our young people to understand their needs and try to solve their problems. According to President Xi, we need to help our young people with the actual difficulties in their lives, in their job seeking and career development and other needs. I want to focus on study and career. As far as the education system in Hong Kong is concerned, we tend to focus on academic achievements. However, 
there are changes in our economy now, and there are many jobs with a lot of potential that require different skills. However, we're not catching up with the recent developments. Now, our young people should be able to make use of the resources to equip themselves with the necessary skills. If we don't make a change, at the end of the day, the money will be spent, time will be spent, and then after the youth is gone, they won't be able to be able to put their skills into or knowledge into practice and make a living. And they suffer a lot of pressure. And many young people have a sense of failure because of that. We need to tackle these problems so that our young people will feel that they are their own masters so that they can develop a career in the future. In terms of future development and potential that Hong Kong have, we need to make sure our young people understand as well so that we can instill in them a sense of national pride. I think the Hong Kong government should work on the two prongs, that is uh, study and career. And in fact, on the Youth Development Commission, I make use of this platform to um, express my views. I urge the government to help young people understand the future and to understand what talents we need uh, so that we can form um, targeted measures. Then it, as long as resources are deployed to the appropriate areas, we'll be able to groom the talents we need for the future development of Hong Kong. And only by doing so, we'll be able to truly invest in Hong Kong and build a talent pool for Hong Kong. And I think the SAL government and sectors of the community are responsible for giving a bigger playing field for all our young people. So on this note, I urge the SAL government to formulate the blueprint for youth development and to comprehensively respond to the issues young people face and help them tackle the problems so that, like President Xi said, our young people can be a uh, will be able to live a better life. Mr. Stanley Ng. Mr. President, I thank Ms. Starry Lee for moving this motion. President Xi delivered important remarks on the 1st of July. He gave an overview on the role of Hong Kong in terms of uh, the country's reform and opening up. And as he put it, people in Hong Kong have always maintained a close bond with the motherland in will and woe. And this is a good summary of how Hong Kong has very close ties with the mainland. President Xi also acknowledged the principle of one country, two systems implemented since 25 years ago. And he emphasizes that the one country, two systems should remain unchanged, should not change or vacillate in this stand, and should be implemented as it is originally intended precisely. It is tested repeatedly in practice, and it's such a good policy. We should not uh, differ um, from it, and we should adhere to it in the long run. And that I would like to give my take on um, the four expectations, that is to help address um, people's uh, livelihood issues. Now, after the Black Hat riot in Hong Kong, I agree even more that only those who are patriotic should, uh, should be allowed to administer Hong Kong. And there is no country or region in the world where people will allow an, a, an unpatriotic or even treasonous force uh, to take power. Otherwise, the outcome will be chaotic. So for those in power, they must understand accurately that we should fully and faithfully implement the principle of one country, two systems, and they must show resolve to do so. So in terms of Further enhancing the level of governance in Hong Kong, one country, two systems, and patriotism are essential. For patriotism, it means a sense of responsibility, and it forms um, a sort of cohesive force with uh, inside and outside the government. As long as it is good for the country and good for Hong Kong, we will take action. Under the principle of one country, two systems, the central authorities have given Hong Kong some rights 
but with rights comes duties. Presidency has put forward some strong demands for Hong Kong government. Meanwhile, he also encourages Hong Kong people. We need a patriotic governing team to set a good example. It should also be a requirement within the governing team. So presidency has given us a detailed analysis on the problems facing Hong Kong. He has also put forward a clear direction as far as Hong Kong is concerned, and we should carefully study his remarks. Mr. Xia Baolong, the director, previously also mentioned the five merits of a patriot or patriots administering Hong Kong. So the central authorities have guided us by formulating a comprehensive set of guidelines on governance. And this will uh, be an important guiding principle for the Hong Kong government in the future. And this is something we should uh, study in depth. Mr. President, it is not only presidency's expectation that the Hong Kong government should address people's livelihood issues. It is also Hong Kong people's expectation. We must act quickly to resolve deep-seated problems as quickly as possible. We must uh, always look at the people's aspirations and try to resolve their problems. And it is also um, one way to ensure supply and to ensure social justice. According to presidency, we must make sure that the people um, can improve their uh, lives as long as they work hard. And the FTU also shares the same goal. There should be sharing of wealth and um, the uh, fruit of success so that we provide for our people um, as they study, live here, and age, and that we have a fair society for them. I hope that the SAR government will stay united and actively respond to the expectations put forward by presidency as well as, well as our people so that uh, this government can tackle challenges and uh, build a better future for Hong Kong as our home. Dr. Tek Chi Yun. Thank you, Mr. President. The 1st of July came uh, with a thunderstorm and presidency delivered some important remarks which showed his concern. And recently, we have had different sessions to exchange ideas and learn about presidency's remarks. More importantly, I think we should make sure that um, the words are put into action. In other words, legislators as well as all stakeholders should have a clear idea of their roles so that they can all help improve Hong Kong. I'd like to respond to presidency's speech. Uh, in a summary of three points. First, we must move towards democratic development in Hong Kong. According to presidency, after reunification to the motherland, Hong Kong people um, become the masters of their own region. And presidency also reiterate, reiterates on a number of occasions that uh, the basic law still sa stands, and the ultimate goal is to have universal suffrage for the Legislative Council election and C election. The Legislative Council's role is to make people's voice heard as um, legislators represent the people and to strengthen Hong Kong's role as a bridge between the mainland and the rest of the world. So on this front, we should continue to take forward constitutional development. And the Hong Kong SAL government should create favorable conditions so that all we can all try to forge a consensus and seek common ground and find a way out in terms of constitutional reform. Second, maintaining Hong Kong's distinctive status and advantages. As pointed out by President Xi, the unique advantage of Hong Kong is that we have the mainland as our hinterland and we are well connected with the rest of the world. Hong Kong is an international financial center and there is abundant capital inflow um, through Hong Kong into the mainland and the vice versa. In order to bolster Hong Kong status as an international financial center, we need to make sure this mechanism 
is well protected. We should also embrace the spirit behind this mechanism and to make sure that the rule of law and this mechanism will continue to be in place. Hong Kong is an international financial center. We are a blessed place. To the rest of the world, we are the gateway or the window to the mainland. And without this central authority's blessing, Hong Kong's role will be diminished. And this is exactly what we expect of one country, two systems. And this is also um, what one country, two systems means. Point three, to maintain social harmony and stability. We should all work together to achieve that goal. And according to President Xi, we must give special love and care to young people. Because only when young people um, have a bright future will Hong Kong have a bright future. Young people are not happy with this government. It's been three years. Many young people are facing trial because of the incidents and their studies and career prospects are strong, um, heavily impacted on. We believe that, that we should put this to an end and it's time for us to create social harmony. And we should help these young people turn anew and be integrated into society after they have faced the legal consequences. Support should be given to these young people. When circumstances permit, parole should be granted to show that the Hong Kong government is willing to create social harmony at the end of this black hat violence. This must be undertaken by the SAL government, which is the leader of Hong Kong. Apart from improving the mechanism, the SAL government should also show uh, resolve in uh, being tolerant and inclusive. I so submit. Mr. Ngai Man Yu, it has been 25 years since Hong Kong returned to the motherland, and this is a new chapter for Hong Kong. We have went from chaos to order, and we have gone from governance to prosperity in our new chapter. As policymakers, whether um, it is lawmakers or government officials, a more important vision is waiting for us. We must hold ourselves accountable to the people. We must face up to the challenges and create a sense of fulfillment and happiness among the people. Presidency reminded us to tackle livelihood issues and we must address to calls from the people. In this regard, the central government provided clear and concrete guidance and they demonstrated firsthand how we can tackle people's issues. Early this year, when um, the fifth wave was at its peak, many people um, felt confused and helpless, and the central government set up or deployed a task force to help fight the pandemic in Hong Kong. Supplies and medical items arrived in Hong Kong. One makeshift hospital after another was built in Hong Kong. Experts and delegations left their family in order to offer help in Hong Kong. So um, actions spoke louder than words, and it showed how we could actually tackle um, the worries of the people. It answered the calls of the Hong Kong people, and they showed commitment and efficiency. And um, that was conducive to improving the quality and quantity of work. And that reminded us to be more committed in tackling livelihood issues. We must embrace breakthrough thinking in order to um, overcome various livelihood issues. President Xi also pointed out that the main issue in the main hope in Hong Kong is to um, live better lives, um, greater um, living spaces, better education for the children, and better care for the elderly. These show the aspirations of Hong Kong people, and they laid out the clear um, objectives for the government. The chief executive talked about 
a results-oriented approach, um, the government should implement President Xi's directions. The chief executive announced that four working groups would be set up to deal with um, issues that require high-level government steer, including intergenerational poverty, land and housing supply, district issues, public housing. I have high hopes for these four working groups with the steer of um, the, the bureaus. Well, um, institutionally, um, the, dep the, the post of deputy um, secretaries can offer timely support in order to tackle the um, big issues such as land and housing. Apart from um, embracing a new spirit in policy making in areas such as elderly care, um, health care, housing, etc. Concrete key performance indicators must be drawn up. Apart from um, investment in public administration, the public would like to know how much um, well, how long the queue for public housing would be five years down the road? Um, by what extent would the um, wages for university graduates gone up, and how much, how long would they have to wait for specialist outpatient services five years from now? Are public resources put into proper use, and are we achieving the results? The new term government must utilize KPIs in tackling livelihood issues. That way, we can truly address the call of the people. Dr. Chow Men Kong. President, after um, a, an extraordinary four years, um, we desperately need guidance. President Xi arrived in Hong Kong to attend the inauguration ceremony. It showed the sincere um, care offered by the central government, and his words certainly um, reassured the public and the society. He said one country um, two systems has been tested repeatedly in practice. It serves the fundamental interests of Hong Kong, Macau, and the country. There is no reason for us to change such a good policy, and we must adhere to it in, in the long run. This power, power, powerful speech by President Xi um, was a strong um, rebuttal to um, certain views um, that sought to um, erode public confidence in the SAL or the nation. And President Xi stressed that Hong Kong is going from chaos to order and from governance to prosperity. The next five years is a critical juncture for Hong Kong's development. And President Xi offered four expectations for Hong Kong. The SAL government and the society must understand the challenges um, presented in our nation and due to geopolitical tensions, they must reinforce um, education on different levels and they must promote um, loyalty and sense of belonging of the people to the nation and they must um, reinforce the um, policies and solutions. The um, public administration structure should be adjusted and uh, market power should be deployed, and <clears throat> the dual circulation framework should be properly used in order to maximize the strengths of one country, two systems, and that would create a um, more holistic platform for Hong Kong's development. The four expectations of presidency include um, improving governance and to create a new chapter of good governance. This show that the SAL governance, um, the, the quality of governance has come under the spotlight of the central government for the mainland and um, Singapore over the course of reform. Um, experts would be engaged to act as advisors and they play an important role of um, improving the efficiency of governance. And um, since the um, 18th plenary session, um, 
it has been reinforced that Hong Kong is um, pivotal to national development. The um, NDRC was given a mission to offer annual and long-term plans. Um, the Development Reform Committees on a provincial level, including a national research center, would find out about um, the needs of different places on the mainland and offer corresponding solutions. They became a key driver to improvement. Meanwhile, for Singapore, a um, research division has been set up under the Prime Minister's office and the unit seeks to tackle various national challenges, including demographics, um, climate, and the outcome of research is translated into policies which would seek to um, improve the nation. I urge the SAL government to establish a chief executive policy unit as proposed by the CE in order to um, look at different um, policies such as ed education, um, de development, healthcare, etc. And the unit can allow the CE and secretaries to more accurately address the calls of the people. I also recommend commissioning more academics and experts to act as full-time advisors so that um, uh, a sound government can um, properly um, create synergy with the market. The new term government must be pragmatic and be held accountable to the people. I believe um, we are going to see light at the end of the tunnel and we will create a bright new page. Mr. Tony Chair. Presidency made an important speech on July the 1st. It has been 25 years since Hong Kong returned to the motherland. The central government um, acknowledged the su success of one country, two systems. And like President Xi said, there is no reason for us to change such a good policy and we must adhere to it in the long run. President Xi's speech also summarized um, our experience um, in the past 25 years. He offered four must to ensure that one country, two systems will continue into the future. As a member returned from a functional constituency, I agree that our status and strengths must be maintained. And President Xi also reiterated that the CG will, central government will continue to reinforce um, Hong Kong status as an aviation and financial hub and to um, maintain a free trade environment. His um, presidency offered four expectations for the SEL government. I'd like to talk about the need to uphold harmony and peace. Hong Kong is one of the freest cities in the world. We are um, diverse, inclusive, and hardworking people from all around the world, regardless of race and religion. Most of them are looking for stability and prosperity, and they believe that with hard work, they can change the lives of themselves and their family. We are an inclusive city, and together we created the miracle that is Hong Kong, and they contributed to the opening up reforms of the nation. Unfortunately, a minority of um, unscrupulous people sought to make everything political, they um, sought to um, hold a so-called referendum and started the illegal Occupy Central movement, um, the Mong Kok riots, the black clad violence. These jeopardized the rule of law and um, jeopardized the SAR. They hampered our development and the effective governance of the SAR government. As a, as a result, Hong Kong was overtaken by um, a number of mainland cities in different areas. As President Xi said, um, Hong Kong can no, cannot tolerate um, chaos and we cannot afford to see chaos. We must work together in um, pursuing positive development. It's normal that um, different peoples would have 
different people would have different views on issues, but we must be decisive and we cannot do anything un unlawful. So a, um, a, a band with us approach is certainly not correct. So long as we all love Hong Kong and adhere to the laws of the Hong Kong SAR, we can become positive um, powers in contributing to the SAR. The new chief executive, Mr. John Lee, pointed out recently that social stability is of utmost importance. Without stability, there is no development. So we must remain um, progressive. Um, in midst of stability, in the past, certain officials paid too much attention attention to stability. That's why we stagnated. The SAL government must be determined and proactive, and the spirit of our culture of governance must change. We must um, look at the relationship or interactions between the government and the market. So the uh, and if efficient um, government should work with the market. So hopefully all civil servants and um, policy makers can accurately understand Ms. Uh, President Xi's words such that um, we would love Hong Kong and love the nation. We must continue to embrace one country, two systems. And we must continue to be bold and inclusive to create better lives for the people of Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. Sunny Tang, President, the key address of um, President C um, is inspirational and it really um, soothes our hearts. It um, charts a way forward for our development and it is an assurance for the 7 million population in Hong Kong. It clears the air and um, clarifies that uh, there is no um, limit to the one country, two systems principle. There are four expectations raised by, by President Xi. First is to include um, enhancing our impetus for development and um, the, national, the nation will uh, give it full support to Hong Kong. Now, President Xi's uh, speech has been uh, very uh, precise and also um, it says um, it gives a lot of responsibility to the industry and commerce sector. First, Hong Kong should proactively integrate with the national uh, development as uh, Belt and Road, um, GBA development, as well as the 14th um, five-year plan based on our historical strength. Say for um, industry, the, gov uh, the national uh, government has been offering Hong Kong with um, a lot of um, soil for development, including a vast uh, domestic market as well as the uh, Qianhai and um, Hang Qin um, policies. We have to integrate and we have to do so proactively. We have to proactively integrate with the national opportunities uh, to develop, otherwise uh, we will miss the uh, prime opportunities. Second, presidency supports Hong Kong to engage in more comprehensive and closer uh, interactions with the international community. I think Hong Kong has to give full play to our strength as um, an international financial center to serve as a bridge and window um, between um, the country and the outside world so that we can introduce uh, foreign investors into the country and um, uh, help um, mainland enterprises to uh, go global. Industries including the textile industry a share a major um, portion of the international market. And we have an uh, invaluable uh, experience in terms of uh, manufacturing, production, as well as um, supply. We should uh, use our strength to contribute to the country. Third, President Xi mentioned that the central government fully supports Hong Kong to um, take forward the reforms to uh, dismantle uh, interest barriers and unleash the um, immense um, development uh, potential. It uh, highlights the importance of uh, in-depth reforms uh, to address the deep-rooted issue in Hong Kong. For the industry, industrial sector, we have to we have to have 
a comprehensive development blueprint and also engage the deal track a development model to to promote a conventional um, industries as well as um, and new and advanced uh, industries so that we can diversify our structure and we have to share our economic fruits uh, more fairly with the people and establish um, Hong, uh, and um, uh, and uh, achieve happiness together. President Xi said, um, the more robust we adhere to the one country, two, si two systems uh, principle, the more uh, prosperous Hong Kong will become. It shows that there will be unlimited development opportunities as long as we adhere to the principle. Thank you. Ms. Carmen Ken. Thank you, President. The first of July speech made by uh, President Xi is very I inspirational. As the first batch of um, Hong Kong uh, lawyers uh, who have who has attained um, um, practicing rights uh, in the uh, mainland, I want to share my experience. I want to share what I've learned from the uh, second must. That is, um, we have to uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing um, SAR's high degree of autonomy. Secure, safeguarding harmony and stability, as well as um, the um, sovereignty and um, uh, territorial um, integrity of the country is a key to the one country, two systems principle. We have to ensure the high degree of autonomy in Hong Kong by, by safeguarding um, the country's um, development, development's interests and uh, sovereignty. Presidency also mentioned the constitutional order of Hong Kong. Hong Kong is an inalienable part of the country. Under, under Article 31 of the uh, Constitution, as well as the de decision of the uh, National People's Congress, um, Hong Kong um, uh, is um, Hong Kong has been uh, assigned the uh, SAR um, status. We enjoy um, autonomy in terms of um, the um, in terms of um, executive uh, legislation as well as um, um, judiciary. We base our constitutional order on the country's uh, constitution and the basic law. Presidency said that the overall jurisdiction of the central government is the source of the governing power of the government. If there is no overall jurisdiction by the central government, how can we enjoy high degree of autonomy? We must not forget that the high degree of autonomy is based on Article 12 of the Basic Law. It uh, specifies that Hong Kong SAR is a SAR directly um, directly. Um, answering to the central government um, while enjoying high degree of um, autonomy. The key officials are appointed by the um, central people's government. Under Article 20, 48 of the Basic Law, we have to uh, follow the instructions of the um, central people's uh, government. And also, um, the NPC has the power to interpret, decide on, and um, uh, amend the uh, Basic Law, including um, the decision to improve uh, the uh, electoral system in Hong Kong. These uh, highlights the uh, overall jurisdiction exercised by the central government, which is also uh, recognized by the uh, High Court. Presidency said that um, the central government's overall jurisdiction is um, essential to uh, our high degree of aut autonomy. It is a reminder for the Hong Kong SAR government. That is the integration, the uh, alignment between overall jurisdiction and the high degree of autonomy is the only way to success. And also the uh, due responsibility um, borne by the uh, chief executive in Hong Kong is um, also very important. In the past, some um, tried to um, um, mislead uh, people that um, the overall jurisdiction exercised by the central government would undermine the high degree of autonomy. In fact, they are uh, two sides of the same coin. We have to um, explain to people the uh, correlation between the two. And also, President Xi said that uh, the executive and the legislative branch um, are supportive of each other, while um, uh, there is a check and balance. Under Article 38 of the Basic Law, the legislative branch uh, would monitor the government uh, through uh, questions, uh, debates, and um, scrutiny. 
Now the chief executive has um, uh, attend a question and answer session um, as the legislative council, and it and he also said that the key uh, officials would um, keep on communicating with the uh, legislative council members. It is a good beginning of uh, a working relationship between the two branches. In formulation of uh, policies, the government should uh, continue to communicate with us uh, closely. In the past uh, half a year, I did my best to attend um, meetings of panels and subcommittees so that um, uh, we can fulfill uh, what uh, presidency um, urges us to do. And I, I hope that um, Mr. John Lee and his team, under the principle of uh, patriots administering Hong Kong, can fulfill the full expectations of the government of the of our presidency uh, to improve the governance and uh, help Hong Kong to scale new heights. Thank you, Mr. Andrew Lam, uh, Mr. Holden Chow. President, on the 1st of July, President Xi made a very important and encouraging speech. It um, set the path for the future of one country, two systems principle. Concerning the four must and four expectations mentioned by President Xi, I would like to focus on the four must. According to my understanding, It is about um, faithfully implementing the principle of one country, two systems. First, the first must is to fully implement the one country, two systems principle, upholding the uh, national security and the developmental interests of the country is the highest principle. Um, the more robust the system is, the more prosperous we will be. Second is to uphold the central government's overall jurisdiction while securing the SAR's high degree of autonomy. The third must is to fully implement patriots uh, administering Hong Kong, that the governing power must rest securely with the patriots. President Xi mentioned that no places on earth would allow governing power to rest with uh, traitors. So for our long-term stability, we have to ensure that at all times the uh, power is rest, uh, is resting with patriots. The fourth must is that we have to keep um, our connection with the world market and relying on the strong support from the motherland so that we can contribute to the greater rejuvenation of the Chinese um, uh, people. So all these four must are about adhering and fully implementing the principle of one country, two systems. If we allow the governing power to rest with those against uh, China and who are um, who want to cause a chaos, we will lose everything. The political system will become unstable and Hong Kong will become an opponent to the central people's governments. That's what we have seen uh, during the Black Lives violence uh, saga. It will scare off the investors and um, corporations. If we want to prevent that, well, if we um, if the foundation of one country is not as sound, how can we have two systems? I also agree that in terms of the way forward, the government and the community should use our discourse power to tell a good story for Hong Kong and China, and also the uh, government has to uh, ramp up. Um, is uh, efforts to explain our true situation to the world. There are people who deliberately attack our country, our motherland. Still, I believe that there are a lot of uh, people um, in the world who are um, not yet affected by these uh, bias. So we have to tell the success the story of success of one country, two systems, and the country. We have to tell the world how we have uh, succeeded with the uh, staunch support of um, the country and the central people's government. Among the four must 
it's come to my attention that the President's, President Xi has mentioned a common law system. It is indeed our strength. We can, it helps us to become um, a uh, dispute resolution center. Um, our lawyers' uh, ability are widely uh, recognized in the world. Now, with the Belt and Road uh, Initiative, um, there are lots of uh, countries and uh, jurisdictions who would like to work with uh, Hong Kong. We can provide um, common law legal services to these uh, jurisdictions. It is a um, one of the methods for us to contribute to the country. For example, the EBRAM uh, Resolution Dispute Resolution Center. It is already a recognized um, res a dispute resolution platform. Um, according to the website of the OECD. And also um, there are the Arbitration Association in uh, Guangzhou, which we are a partner to. So we can uh, keep up our good work so that uh, we can become an international arbitration center to help the country um, scale new heights. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Lam Jensen. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First of all, I thank you for moving this adjournment motion on the 25th anniversary of Hong Kong's reunification to the motherland. President Xi delivered an important speech that is really inspiring. President Xi also showed concern for Hong Kong people, and this is a booster in terms of confidence among Hong Kong people. President Xi has reminded us that we should make sure that Hong one country, two systems should be upheld, as it is a good policy that can safeguard the fundamental interests of the country and of Hong Kong people. We have gone through ups and downs through the 25 years after reunification, and people's confidence wavered. Subsequently, the NPCSC made a decision, and as a result, the National Security Law of the Hong Kong SAR was enacted. It was then incorporated in Annex 3 of the Basic Law. Then the National People's Congress was empowered to amend the Basic Law, followed by local legislation to enact the Hong Kong National Security Law. Following these steps, we now have stability, and together with Pre President Xi's speech, I have even more confidence as, uh, that as long as we uphold one country, two systems, we will go far. After establishing one country, two systems principle, the next step is to address people's livelihood issues. This is also the expectation of President Xi uh, in terms of housing, education, elderly care, and employment, the government should formulate policies to make sure every citizen in Hong Kong will be able to benefit from the policies so that they know as long as they work hard, they'll be able to improve the life of your own and that of your family. In fact, many workers have told me that whilst struggling to make ends meet, they also need to make sure that children would receive good education. And by the time their children grow up, they would be concerned whether their children would be able to support them or whether they'd be able to afford the residential care home place. That is why we need a pragmatic government to resolve these livelihood issues. I believe all members here will work towards addressing these livelihood issues. The government should also set up indicators to, uh, to solve these problems. After joining the World Trade Organization, many cities in Hong Kong have rapidly um, developed into major cities, even surpassing that the development in Hong Kong. So what advantages does Hong Kong still enjoy? According to the presidency, whilst comprehensively building a modernized socialist country, 
and on the country's journey towards building a modern socialist country in all aspects and realizing the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation, the central government believes that Hong Kong will make great contributions. In other words, we need to bolster our existing advantages. Apart from maintaining our status as an international financial shipping and trading center, we also need to leverage on our advantages in innovation technology and also improve uh, education in other sectors so that we can leverage on our own strengths and make uh, contributions to our country. Our association also, our federation also hopes that there will be stronger communication between the executive and the legislature in the near future so that we can um, follow the four expectations of presidency so that we can stay united and contribute to Hong Kong and our country and build a better future for Hong Kong. I so submit. Mr. Yim Kong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. From the 30th of June to the 1st of July, despite the epidemic situation and inclement weather in Hong Kong, presidency arrived in Hong Kong to pay a visit and attended the inauguration ceremony of the sixth term of the government and administered the oath for Hong Kong officials. That shows how much importance the central authorities attach to Hong Kong SAR. It also shows um, that we must have a good understanding of the one country, two systems. From the perspective of the country and constitutional order, presidency puts forward the four musts so as to um, boost the confidence of different um, sectors of the community in one country, two systems, so as to address the concerns. How long will one country, two systems last and whether it should be kept? Now we have the answer. It is the answer to long-term stability, prosperity and development of Hong Kong. It also provides a good future for Hong Kong. And it will also allow continuous development of Hong Kong in the future. So that around the world, um, different countries will also have the same aspiration for the development of Hong Kong. So the speech is very meaningful. Presidency also puts forward the four expectations in his speech. He emphasizes that Hong Kong should continue to create strong impetus for growth. We're at the key. Uh, we're at a key turning point to maintain a continuous development in Hong Kong. In 1997, the GDP of Hong Kong stood at 1.3 trillion. Um, dollars and last year the GDP stood at 2.86 trillion dollars. It's doubled that in 1997. But comparing to the rest of the world, Hong Kong remains a quite a small economy. In 2021, Hong Kong's GDP only accounted for 2.1 percent of the country's um, uh, GDP. So we m cannot just rely on our own strengths to maintain competitiveness. We must. Uh, create strong impetus for growth. That means, first and foremost, we should be integrated in a, into the country's development plan to create room for development in Hong Kong. There are ample opportunities in the mainland, and at the moment, uh, what we can grasp are the opportunities in the Greater Bay Area. We can rely on Hong Kong's distinctive advantages so that we can complement um, these Hong Kong and uh, the mainland cities can complement each other's strengths. And with a central authority support, we can further be integrated into the country's development plan so that we can also be integrated in the Greater Bay Area as well as the dual circulation uh, strategy of the mainland. So we have these three drivers. On the other hand, we also need to provide new locomotive, which means innovation technology. We should focus on certain um, advantageous areas such as innovation, technology, high-end production, green uh, industries, uh, offshore renminbi business, uh, creative industries, and also IP trading. 
third point, we must expedite the development of the northern metropolis so that it creates a new pillar of development. We can create a an economic belt uh, with Shenzhen together at the border so that we can create a new model of uh, economic development. The central authorities have put forward the directions of economic di development in the long term uh, in Hong Kong. We now have a roadmap and we have goals to achieve in the coming five years. It's a key phrase, a key phase for Hong Kong to um, move towards prosperity. Uh, we should all support Hong Kong to the to uh, in terms of economic development, improving people's livelihood, so that we can create a new chapter. Uh, just like President Xi said, we will continue to scale new heights, and we will definitely be able to enjoy the results um, or the country's uh, rejuvenation together with people in the rest of the country. Elizabeth Quad, thank you, Madam Deputy. Thank first of all, I thank Ms. Ari Lee, your good self, for moving this motion. It's a very important motion, so that we have this occasion to discuss the important speech of President Xi. In the July first speech of President Xi, he states that um, we should uh, adhere to one country, two systems in the long run. It's a great booster. It also provides direction for the long-term development of one country, two systems. It also addresses rumors in relation to the end of to one country, two systems. Now, presidency also puts forward the four musts and four expectations. That shows that he has very deep understanding of the issues in Hong Kong. He has great understanding of how people live in Hong Kong. And he um, basically puts forward demands for the governing team in order to address the difficulties facing people. Now, according to President C, point three is that um, the government should uh, earnestly address people's concerns and difficulties in daily life, and that uh, Hong Kong people want to lead a better life. They want more decent housing and better education and that uh, better care in their twilight years. And I have strong feelings about President C's care for our elderly people. We have a serious aging population in Hong Kong, but there is a lack of support for elderly care. In my district work, when I encounter elderly people, I understand they face a lot of problems. For example, they need to wait for a long time before they could see a doctor or get a place in a residential care home. They are forced to age in place without adequate resource support. And that is why very often elderly people just take care of each other, even um, elderly and disabled uh, people remain in the community. And this has led to quite a number of tragedies recently. In Hong Kong, uh, in the public hospitals, the special outpatient clinics has a long waiting queue. Que Say for West Kowloon Cluster, if you want to see an eye doctor, you need to wait for 164 weeks. That is three years, two months. In fact, the resident visited the Prince of Wales Hospital to see an eye doctor, and uh, he, the resident said that he has cataract. But then the next um, follow-up appointment day would be the uh, would be July 2025, three years later. And I also met with some elderly people who have lost it teeth and there is inadequate dental care for them. According to a survey, many elderly people, uh, and in fact half of them, couldn't sleep because of dental, um, because of toothache, and 70% of them couldn't afford uh, visiting a dental surgeon, and they would just uh, try to treat the problem on their own. In fact, uh, three quarters of the elderly surveyed did not receive dental treatment. Elderly people don't just uh, have toothaches, they have aches in their joints as well. And if they have mobility issues because of the pain, they couldn't move about in the community and their living uh, condition deteriorates. And many people require residential care, but they don't, um, but they don't get a place in the homes. We have 2.06 million elderly people in, in Hong Kong, but only some some 30,000 have entered residential care home places for them. So what is the solution? A, um, poverty is another issue facing elderly. According to a survey, one in every 10 elderly in Hong Kong 
uh, lives in poverty. They can't afford um, to visit a private doctor, but the, but there is a long queue um, for public hospitals. We need to have a pragmatic government, and if we do, we will surely support the government. Uh, in terms of all the problems uh, facing us, I hope that the government will make a bold move and live up to people's expectation and place people's aspiration as their uh, goal in their governance so that they could draw policies to tackle these challenges so that we have a level playing field and let people share the uh, fruit of success. And we must also live up to the expectation of presidency as well. Ms. Lillian Kwok, Madam Deputy, first I'd like to thank Ms. Starry Lee for moving this adjournment motion, which allows us to uh, voice our views in this debate. On July the 1st, President Xi made an important speech in Hong Kong, and he stressed the Patriots administering Hong Kong principle. So long as one country's two systems is implemented in a steadfast manner, the system is in line with the fundamental f fundamental interests of the nation, and it is conducive to Hong Kong's prosperity and stability, and it is a good policy that we must adhere to in the long run. His words alleviated any doubt from the society and sought to reassure everyone. However, um, if we are to achieve sustainable development, our youth is very important. President Xi said we should pay particular attention to our young people because the future of our youth has to do with the future of Hong Kong. He talked about the need to improve education for our children the deficiencies and issues associated with our education system in Hong Kong were reflected in the incidents of 2019. So going forward, we must allow our young people to deeply understand nation, um, society, as well as global developments. And we must reinforce the sense of belonging and pride. Education is certainly the ideal platform to achieve that goal. Through school curricula, our society, the promotion of Chinese culture, our children can more readily appreciate their nation and understand that we have over 5,000 years of history. Traditional um, culture is profound. The more our young people learn about it, the more they would agree. And naturally, they would feel um, pride as Chinese people, so long as we stick to our um, stance and educate our young people on the strengths of Hong Kong and the nation. And with a sense of belonging or pride, um, both Hong Kong and our nation can go forward and we can be a bridge. Mindset is of utmost importance. It's about um, nurturing that sense among our young people. Many young people talked about, um, they think about um, what they would stand to gain and they think too highly of themselves. And this is very common among young people. So um, we must instill um, a sense of the bigger picture among our youth they must remain committed. Instead of asking what they stand to gain, they should ask what they could give. Going from individual to family to um, nation, the future is dictated by one how one um, equips himself, and that way they can become um, our future pillars. The previous term government spent $570 billion on education. In 2021 alone, education um, made up 4.4% of our GDP. 
So positive and sound values and ethics must um, begin with our children. So that is how um, we can set a positive example. But um, this goes beyond investing resources. In terms of our um, fundamental or basic education, we must pay attention to our policies. Again, um, mentality is everything. We must build positive ethics in our children. They must have a um, they must have correct um, values of nation. Um, a positive future for our youth means a positive future for Hong Kong. We hope um, together with our young people, we can build a better tomorrow for Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. Frankie Yek. Madam Deputy, President Xi recently made a speech in Hong Kong. He acknowledged upfront the importance of Hong Kong's contributions to the opening up of our nation. He stressed that one country, two systems is a good policy that has no reason to change. And his words alleviated some of the um, concerns from the society over the year 2047. He stressed that the central government supports the development of Hong Kong and our role as an international aviation and financial hub would be reinforced. He offered a concrete direction for Hong Kong and his words were encouraging. Our aviation industry has a very long history. Back in the 1970s and 80s, Hong Kong was established as one of the key um, aviation and maritime hubs. Even though Hong Kong's port throw throughput has declined in recent years with the development of ports in Hong Kong, the global economic um, focus has shifted to the east. Hong Kong has a um, comprehensive network and that is why um, transportation and logistics still have a bright future, but the SAL government should um, establish more positive policies going forward um, for the um, new Transport and Logistics Bureau. It will foster the development of transportation and logistics going forward, but we still need proper enforcement. The Liberal Party hopes that um, a new the um, maritime and logistics department could be set up to enforce relevant policies. Given the importance of maritime and logistics, the government should consider setting up a, um, a, a maritime and port authority, similar to the airport authority, to complement the national 14 five-year plan and the um, GBA outline development plan. More than 80% of global um, freight um, uses maritime services and for related industries such as maritime insurance and financing, demand is ever growing. The government has introduced many tax concessions such as um, uh, vessel leasing Um, ship managers, um, agents, etc., and these could create a clustering effect. To reinforce Hong Kong's role as a maritime hub, we recommend the provision of tax concessions for um, vessel um, traders and managers in order to um, encourage them to operate in Hong Kong. Um, smart maritime services are the way to go. Some of the port operations have been digitalized already, such as um, uh, re re remote um, cargo inspection services, smart chiller systems, etc. These were adopted by operate some operators on a voluntary basis. If um, the government provides more coordination support, um, port efficiency can be enhanced. That is why um, we propose the setting up of an electronic platform for um, maritime operations for ocean-going ves vessels. More of them have um, adopted um, liquid nat natural gas by or LPG by 2030. The number of vessels deploying LPG will increase to more than 8,000. So um, LPG 
um, filling service or, or facilities must be introduced. But Hong Kong must wait till at least 2025 before relevant technical requirements as well as safety guidelines are drawn up and we are um, lagging far behind. The mainland and Singapore are already providing LPG um, refilling facilities and the Hong Kong SAR must um, draw up the relevant plans as soon as possible to reinforce our status as a logistics and maritime hub. We must pay attention to all relevant services. We hope the new term government can establish um, helpful policies to enforce our status and as such we can continue to contribute to the nation. Dr. Priscilla. Madam Deputy, Prince Presidency made an important speech on July the 1st. He stressed that one country, two systems is a good policy that is in line with the fundamental interests of the nation, Hong Kong and Macau. That's why we must adhere to it in the long run. One country, two systems is essential to the whole world indeed um, in facet or promoting peace. Peace can tackle a number of historical issues. The so-called um, issue of 1997, um, started from a, a war and it ended in peace. Um, the United States, which adopts a federal system, um, they do not enjoy the same degree of high autonomy Hong Kong enjoys. Article 2 of the Basic Law stipulates that the MPC SC em empowers the um, Hong Kong SAL in exercising um, various powers, including um, power of final adjudication. President Xi, in his speech, said um, Hong Kong, uh, uh, the central government's overall jurisdiction over Hong Kong must be maintained, and it goes hand in hand with a high degree of autonomy of Hong Kong. In recent years, um, whenever we talked about overall jurisdiction over Hong Kong, many people um, were surprised because they never heard it before. Hong Kong's high degree of autonomy um, has always been underpinned by the central government's overall jurisdiction over Hong Kong. The central government has always assumed overall jurisdiction over um, all parts of its land. Only under special authorization could Hong Kong and Macau enjoy a high degree of autonomy. So um, such um, empowerment is important. Um, the national constitution is the root of the basic law. Um, Section 31, 6 and 3 are the basis of um, the constitution of the Hong Kong SAR. The public should understand well that under one country, under one country, two systems, Hong Kong and the nation share the same fate. President Xi visited Hong Kong to attend the inauguration ceremony of the Sixth Term Government. Many Western countries said that um, one one country, two systems has been. Um, they criticize one country, two systems since democracy in Hong Kong has been eroded. One country, two systems uh, was the answer to the peaceful return of Hong Kong to the motherland. As for its future, um, its success lies in the hands on Chinese people. In 2014 and 2019, many people in Hong Kong started to disregard the law, the basic law, as well as the constitution. And um, they uh, stigmatized the nation. And as such, presidency stressed that one country, two systems must be implemented in a lawful manner. He spoke at length to stress that the chief executive, government officials, and the public should uphold the basic law and um, observe the laws of Hong Kong. And he talked about the importance of the common law and certain ca characteristics should be preserved. He also talked about judicial independence. During the unification, um, 
well, the uh, basic law has been in place um, back back then already, but with the consistent attacks or, or smearing, we must um, stress the, the strengths of one country, two systems. Going forward, Hong Kong can make use of the benefits of one country, two systems in taking part in um, Belt and Road developments and um, there should be connectivity with the great, um, Greater Bay Area and different fronts. We should use some um, fintech, and uh, we play the role of intermediary in legal services. Finally, we must contribute to the nation and maximize the um, strengths of one country, two system. Dr. Johnny Ng, Madam Deputy, President C attended the inauguration and the commemoration of the 25th uh, reunification uh, of Hong Kong on the 1st of July. His speech uh, really meant a lot for us. President Xi maintained that uh, the one country, two systems uh, principle should be uh, here too. It is really reassuring and it is a recognition for um, um, the success of the principle in the past 25 years. The uh, four expectations and four must are mentioned by uh, President Xi um, are very inspirational for our development. We have entered into a, an era of um, governance from chaos. With the important address of uh, President Xi, the new term government is urged to improve uh, governance. I think um, the new term of government must address the issue of uh, scattered governance uh, with, uh, among departments and lack of um, collaboration. The government must make use of digital technology to uh, coordinate the different bureaus and departments uh, to cover blind spots and also make use of big data to uh, assist policy making. The government should streamline uh, policy making a process. In the mainland, the uh, central people's government has uh, highly uh, digitalized uh, the uh, policy making process. The government should learn from the mainland government. We have to rely on our strength as an international gateway um, for the country as well as um, the support uh, from the country. We have to integrate with the GBA development strategy and the 14 5 year plan. We have to utilize our own strengths to help um, mainland enterprises go global and connect with the international community. President Xi visited the um, Hong Kong uh, Science and Technology Park. It shows his expectation for our innovation and technology industry. The chief executive mentioned that uh, we will enhance um, investments uh, on innovation and technology. We will uh, restart the um, uh, quality uh, immigrant uh, scheme for INT talents um, to help um, our in, uh, the development of the, in of the industry. President Xi also mentioned the importance to address the livelihood issues and achieve a harmony and stability. Besides housing issues, we have to promote the development of industries to make the cake bigger. We have to help our young people to achieve upward mobility. It is also very important um, to achieve stability. The uh, pros prosperity of the country lies with um, young people. President Xi mentioned that we should give special care and love to young people. We have to help them understand the uh, national development and the international world. We have to uh, help them to become masters of Hong Kong. We have to help them overcome the difficulties in studies, employment, entrepreneurship, and uh, purchasing housing, and give them more opportunities. It shows that President Xi's expectation and love for the next generation of Hong Kong. The four expectations mentioned by President Xi charted a clear path for the governance of the Hong Kong SL government. All parties in Hong Kong should help implement the uh, sh uh, should help should join hands to realize um, Mr. Pres uh, President Xi's expectations so that we uh, don't let him and the Central People's Government down. Thank you, Ms. Chen Yuming. Thank you, uh, Madam Deputy. I thank you for moving um, today's motion so that I can. Um,
join the discussion on how we can implement the uh, spirits behind uh, President Xi's speech and open a new chapter of governance for Hong Kong. President Xi attended in person the um, reunification ceremony as well as the inauguration of the sixth term of the government. His speech sends a clear message to the local and uh, international community, the um, success of one country to systems principle. It is um, a special characteristic of Hong Kong, and President Xi mentioned four must and four expectations, urging the Hong Kong SAR to continue on this uh, path of um, development. In terms of the uh, long-term de development and stability of Hong Kong, President Xi's speech um, is, uh, is really a, um, a guiding lamp. It shows that the Central People's Government uh, give a lot of care to the situation and development of Hong Kong. It shows the love and care of the uh, people's, uh, Central People's Government um, to Hong Kong. I think um, the community in Hong Kong has been studying closely the four must and four expectations and um, uh, pondering on how we can respond to uh, President Xi's expectation. Now, the GBA is a 300 hectare in size. It will it um, embodies um, vast opportunities, and it is also a solution to our deep-rooted issues, including op uh, job opportunities, housing, Medicare, as well as um, elderly care. However, there are lots of uh, rural areas, and the infrastructure in urban areas are relatively um, undeveloped. I, be I believe that the sixth term of the government, led by uh, Mr. John Lee, will speed up uh, innovation and development uh, in the north, uh, in the northern uh, metropolis area, as well as um, uh, starting the preliminary work on um, building infrastructure. Now, our um, uh, compensation for land resumption still lack, uh, is still lacking behind, and there is room for improvement. In the past few decades, our neighbour, uh, Shenzhen, through combining um, developments in rural and urban areas, uh, new cities, um, new, a beautiful uh, city skyline has been created. I hope the government can seize the opportunity to boldly use uh, the northern, northern metropolis area as a testing point, as a pilot area for a uh, rural and urban co-development and address the deep-rooted um, developmental uh, conflicts between rural and urban areas and also allow um, the indigenous uh, people to uh, conserve uh, their uh, homeland. Now, in the uh, New Territories North, there are lots of obnoxious uh, facilities and planning which really undermine the uh, development and also cause um, uh, oppositions from the uh, Shenzhen uh, People, after the um, after Mr. John Lee has come into office, he started um, enforcing enhancing a communication with the uh, Shenzhen counterparts. I believe that uh, under the guidance of Mr. of President Xi's speech, um, the government will be uh, will decisively um, relocate the obnoxious facilities uh, in the um, northern New Territories North to uh, facilitate the developments there. Now, in this critical process. Um, of transition from chaos to stability. I hope I can work closely with um, fellow members to um, keep in mind uh, President Xi's speech and uh, serve our purpose to monitor the government and help the government to speed up development so that we can build a new Hong Kong um, with um, the Northern Metropolis uh, Development Strategy so that uh, people can live bigger, enjoy a better education, better elderly care, as well as uh, more job opportunity opportunities. Together, we can create a better future for Hong Kong and help Hong Kong integrate with the national development and contribute to the um, great cause of one country, two systems. Thank you. Mr. Michael Lok, Madam Deputy, I thank you for moving this timely motion so that we can discuss in depth President Xi's uh, key address on the 1st of July. One of the four expectations of President Xi is improving our governance system, capacity, and advocacy. I have been engaged in uh, grassroots work for many years. I understand what um, 
governance uh, capacity is. Besides um, revamping the um, upper echelon of the uh, governments, we have to improve uh, district governance as well. Since uh, the black clad, um, from the black clad violence um, to COVID-19, we can see that um, district governance is, is the weakest link in the government. The response is very slow. During the epidemic, we uh, don't have enough um, district um, help. That's why we have missed uh, the opportunity to conduct universal community testing. There are passionate people in the districts who want to help. The point is um, we lack um, coordination. The uh, chief executive has announced that um, a, a district work a coordination unit will be established. This is a very good start. With a sustained effort, we can um, improve uh, the government's um, uh, image and also um, address livelihood uh, issues. I believe that besides um, top-down management, we should um, also address um, the um, the issue uh, from the public's perspective. The point is the government has to genuinely care for the needs of um, the people. Madam Deputy, you are also um, you were also a district councillor, so I uh, I think you uh, understand it very well. With the help of the um, people, we can achieve uh, anything. There are lots of experience to be learned from the mainland's experience. And also from the uh, aspiration, we should uh, develop a system. We have to enhance and um, rectify the district council, district council uh, mechanism. So that uh, we can um, prevent um, uh, external influence from infiltrating into the in district councils. And also we have to ensure that district councillors serve as a bridge between the government and the people and help the government to explain its policies. And also we have to support um, um, patriotic groups in Hong Kong to unify uh, the public. In short, there have to be policies and there have to be resources. We have to allow these uh, patriotic organizations to apply for subsidies and uh, get um, an office. We have to uh, uh, reach out to these groups and uh, help them uh, develop. Through them, we can educate the public and um, touch the hearts of the people. This is very important. Now, uh, district management is not just the purview uh, under the Home Affairs and Youth Bureau. I have every faith in um, Ms. Alice Mack. Now, with these mechanisms in place, we have to make sure that uh, the high officials are delegating power to uh, the uh, districts, and they have to uh, reach out to the neighborhood to listen to the people, and then we can draw power and wisdom from the people and enhance our governance from the root so that Hong Kong people is unified to integrate with the development opportunities of the country. People will then understand the policies of the nation. And we can also ensure that patriots are ministering Hong Kong at the district level. And then we can achieve the full um, democracy um, by people as advocated by our country rather than those um, um, fake democracy we have seen uh, in other countries. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Maggie Chen. Madam Deputy, Presidency delivered important speech which provides clear guidelines on how we can improve Hong Kong people's livelihood and how we can safeguard one country, two systems. The important address made by Presidency on the 1st of July from the country and the um, nation's strategic perspective 
to explain our understanding, which is in line with the country's understanding. And that one country, two systems is a good policy that should not change and should be adhered to in the long run. And it is one important component in realizing the rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. It shows the confidence and resolve of the country's development. And it also provides clear guidelines to um, improving people's livelihood in Hong Kong and provides good safeguard uh, to ensure that uh, one country, two systems in Hong Kong will be implemented as it is originally intended precisely, which will not change or vacillate in this stand. I'm a legal practitioner and I strongly support one country, two systems. The recognition of one country, two systems in this speech provides great confidence. And I feel optimistic about the role of one country, two systems and what uh, it can do to the legal profession in the country and in Hong Kong. We need to ditch the idea of a small government and big market. Instead, we should develop the market so as to create new uh, chapter for good governance. According to President Xi, apart from having a capable government serving an efficient market, we also need to address people's concerns and difficulties in daily life. We need to allow people to have decent housing and better education and better elderly care so that people are convinced that if you work hard, you can improve the life of your own and that of your family. So this is one illustration of uh, common or sharing the wealth in and the philosophy behind. As a legislator, I am sure I will cooperate with the government and I will also support the government in addressing people's concerns and difficulties. In terms of improving the economy, helping the disadvantaged, the young and the old, um, etc., better planning is needed so that we have a new starting line and that if we work hard, we'll be rewarded and that we can uh, put people first and that we'll be able to share the fruit of success. According to presidency, we also need to work together to safeguard harmony and stability and safeguard one country, two systems and to cherish our home, uh, that is Hong Kong. And we should also give special love and care to our young people. My recommendation is to allow women to unleash their position as they are unique and family as the note to maintaining social stability should be cherished so that we can place more emphasis on so uh, family education and its importance in maintaining social harmony and good governance which will be in line with the mainstream values under one country, two systems, so that we can uh, start the new chapter together. I speak in support of the no, uh, of the motion.